in, in some ways, um, we've come full circle in our product development. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. Today we're taking a look at the long-awaited Muse S. People, I'm wearing this device on my head right now and it is so comfortable. Muse has really outdone themselves and come full circle on product design to be able to bring us an EEG wearable that is flexible and comfortable and as modular as this device right here. I'm including a lot of my interview with Muse co-founder Chris Amone in this video. We're gonna take a look at the hardware, the software, what's under the hood, and stick around towards the end of the video because we'll be talking about a lot of interesting things coming up for Muse in the coming months, so stick around. We start with a long slender white box with the Muse S logo. It actually opens up into two separate boxes. The first contains the modular pot and the charging cable, the next with the soft washable headband itself. complete with a guide and instructions for use, and a thin film protects the front electrodes which you can remove after unboxing. Next, go ahead and charge the modular pod before use. You should see little orange lights flickering on the underside of it. You can actually see the PPG on the bottom of the module as well. Truly what is exciting most about this device is how comfortable it is. The fact that they were able to get sensors that are soft EEG sensors to pick up your brain waves is unbelievable. This is technology that didn't exist 10 years ago and to democratize that information with each other is simply incredible. And this is really going to be the future of wearables. When you realize how soft and inconspicuous this device is, you really realize that you could wear it underneath of a ski cap. Okay, so this is where EEG and other wearable technologies are going. They're going to be seamless. You're going to be able to put them underneath your clothing. They're going to track biometric data day in and day out. And we're gonna know so much about ourselves. Now, of course, you wouldn't wanna be running with this EEG on because it would get all types of interference, but you get the idea about how seamlessly it could go into our clothing. Definitely for a long meditation session, it really reduces the pressure and or any strain on your skin from other EEG wearables. And I've worn a ton of EEG wearables at this point, as you've seen all my different videos, have really um, run the gambit on all the different devices. And this is the most comfortable one that I've worn so far by a pretty wide margin. So that's really saying something. For more in-depth discussion on how EEG wearables track your brainwaves and transmit that information to your phone or computer, check out the playlist in my channel, How Mobile EEG Devices Work. I'll post a link in the description. For Muse S specifically, listen to Chris explain how Interax and really came full circle on this design. You know, in some ways, um, we've come full circle in our product mm -hmm. development. And there's been a lot of really interesting advances in materials that are designed to work with textiles. You know, I think, you know, there's a, there's a recognition that that's where a lot of our wearable electronics are going. Um, but, uh, but really, it was, it was needing to find that balance in, uh, you know, materials that were suitable for uh, skin biosignal measurement. And there's a certain set of requirements on that, um, you know, since that, you know, when you, when you read an electric signal from the skin, it, the, it's, it's not like connecting a wire to a wire, right? So the, the sort of electrochemical behavior of the skin itself and how that relates to the electrode and the chemistry of the electrode is actually really important. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you can't, so just sticking a piece of metal on your head doesn't work like you might expect it to. And so there's that dimension of it, but then there's also like, you know, the necessity to have something that can conform to the body yep. and is washable and can go through manufacturing and will stand the test of time. So there was like, we had different pieces of the puzzle at different times, you know, but it wasn't until, you know, basically about a year and a half ago that we really kind of, you know, broke the sound barrier on this one and really found ourselves in a new realm. It's just like, wow, this is going to work finally.
So that's pretty awesome to hear that story that this soft EEG technology wasn't even around 10 years ago when they were building the original Muse device and actually had to go to the more classic Muse headband uh, design that we're used to. Now, as Chris says in my interview that I'll release next week, that uh, look for the Muse headband actually kind of established them as a company, made it a really recognizable form factor. But the fact that they're able to come full circle into a soft headband that is very comfortable to wear is really exciting. Besides being much better designed for sleep experiences, you really notice the difference in long meditation sessions. If you use a tightening headband with the earlier Muse devices to get good EEG signal, you really do feel some soreness on your forehead and behind your ears after a while. There is no such discomfort with the Muse S and it's so easy to tighten perfectly around your head for great EEG signal and optimal comfort. The other thing that should be mentioned about this device is the modular function in which you can actually detach this pod and theoretically you could put it into different pieces of clothing and actually have it adopt different form factors as Chris explains right here. You wouldn't believe how many of these things that we've ripped apart and used in various different ways. You know, so it's, it's beautiful to have a device where now the, the, the really like um, complex functional piece of it is something that can move from application to application. Two parts to it. And one of them was you have a fabric uh, headband, you need to be able to wash it. Yeah. Right. And then the other dimension of it was, you know, how then can we take this building block, this sort of like Lego piece of brain sensing and then apply it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so we have like a variety of different plans of where we're going to go with that. Um, but when we actually came to how we partition these things, you know, being able to maintain the versatility of the module was actually a pretty important piece of it. So that's really ingenious. The fact that this thing is modular and you could plug it into different form factors makes me feel like I wonder what do it yourself biohackers will get into with this device if it becomes truly modular and they release attachment pieces for different pieces of clothing. As far as new software for the Muse S, they definitely had sleep in mind. The Muse app boasts a new go to sleep journeys aspect that they created with their new partners, Meditation Studio. The Meditation Studio group really has it nailed when it comes to guided meditations from their experts. The sleep modules definitely left me feeling calm, peaceful, and relaxed, and I was fully ready for sleep after one of their meditation sessions. Welcome to the new Go to Sleep section of Muse. This is a collection of unique sound experiences designed to help you develop a healthy go-to-sleep routine so you can fall asleep more easily and wake up feeling more refreshed, restored, and ready to take on the day. In this section, you'll find our custom go-to-sleep journeys, as well as individual soundscapes and guided meditations with no background sound. Now normally it doesn't take me long to fall asleep at night, but one challenge I do have is getting naps in the afternoon if I have a long night ahead of me of social events or being on call and I need to recharge. So my true test was doing a nap trial at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon with one of the soundscapes. One of them was Let Go of Worry by Faith Hunter and it had me totally out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There's definitely an ASMR aspect to these recordings with soft sounds and whispering that totally relax you. And afterwards you can wake up and see the stats on mind, heart rate and stillness. I should also mention that the regular meditation app sections associated with Muse 1 and 2 are also available using the Muse S as well. The expertise of the go to sleep journeys will be moving into all other aspects of the app as well that you can use with the Muse and Muse 2 as Chris explains here. Biofeedback experience. Mm -hmm. um, and we've now finally kind of upgraded the whole system. So I think, you know, what our users are going to find is, you know, as the year progresses, you're going to start to see a lot of the things that we've brought into this, these new go to sleep experiences. We're going to start to see that technology migrate into the rest of the experiences. And I'm super excited about that. I mean, sound is, you know, it's, obvious the relationship that it has with our emotions and with you know, the reason why we joined forces with meditation studio is because well firstly i mean they have an incredible ability to produce quality meditation content uh, and they're, they've been really really good at developing a community of teachers that can address like you know from many different perspectives and kinds of practice but in a way where they, they, they all harmonize with one another. There's not a tension between one kind of style and another. There's a real openness. And so um, what we understood we had to do in order to start to branch out 
and have you know this dimension of bringing people into the practice is we had to have the diversity and you know you know the the match was very clear for us that you know you, I mean you can't just put some guided meditations in your app and really have it, you know, be what it needs to be because you need to speak to enough different people and experiences. So you really have to start with a lot. Okay. So there's been a lot of concern online about the price point and yeah, it is expensive. $350 is expensive for most people, but let us not forget that the original Muse sold for $300 back in 2015. Okay, I think people are getting used to seeing the original Muse costing $150 and don't realize how much uh, reduction in price that it has come down. And when you really look at the cutting edge technology in this device, the soft EEG sensors, the, the software development, everything that goes into this, I would like to see the community be a little bit more understanding of where Interaxon is coming from in pricing the headband at this level. Because as Chris Simone explains, um, to be able to actually price a wearable at this point, it's not like they're making it for cheap and marking up the price so they can make a big profit. You know, I imagine that there's so much money that goes into the actual development, uh, marketing, selling, distribution, all these things need to come into play in order to bring us this cutting edge consumer technology that doesn't cost the multiples, if not tens of thousands of dollars that the other wearables in, in terms of medical grade technology cost. And the fact that this has medical grade EEG in the form factor of a soft wearable is simply amazing. Big, big step. Um, so you need to be producing enough volume and the processes have to be mature enough that you, know, you can actually do this in a low cost way. Um, I mean, I think people really value being able to afford the device and, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, if you, if you look at the kind of research and medical counterparts of this technology, this, this stuff is really, really expensive. And it's, you know, part of the reason why is you're not, you're not getting any economy of scale in it. And you need to be able to figure out how to, to work with really low cost parts, um, in order to be able to, to produce something that's actually affordable. So it's, there are so many markups, you know, that, that go from the cost of the actual, like the sand you're putting into it to the thing that you actually buy. Uh, and so I think I mean, most consumers would be pretty shocked at like how li you know, little the device at, in its raw form can cost in order to be able to buy it in a store for X number of dollars. Uh, so it's, you know, as someone who kind of like tries to build consumer tech, it's just like, really? Like this is, this is how much we have to work within? Like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> yeah. So in paying that amount of money, it might help to understand that, you know, not only are you getting access to cutting edge technology for a relatively reasonable price, but also you're contributing to the company to come out with even better software, even better products in the future that will really catapult us, this small Muse community into learning more and more through our biometric data about meditation and really forming a global mastermind through it. And as promised, let's dive into where Chris talks about the future direction of Muse for people that explore the limitations of the original app and want to go deeper and be able to use calibration to not only show the app where they're at and where they want to go, but also build a library of brainwave data so that they can explore that in greater depth. And as Chris explains, these features should be coming to us in the near future on the main Muse app. You know, Muse has been able to, you know, develop a, a really effective kind of feedback and learning um, tool, let's say. Uh, but, you know, we really, when we developed it, we had to work within the limitations of the data we had access to. And there are nuances in the practice and in an individual's biosignals that need to be respected in order to sort of have things that go deeper or to fit specific applications. And so I think what's really exciting for us is now we kind of have, you know, enough there that we can start to really build that kind of individualized experience where we can start to go into deeper practices or we can start to work on, you know, the threshold between wake and sleep, these hypnagogic states. Um, the states of deep meditation are also very similar to those. And you'll, you'll go from, you know, let's say, um, if I were to bring in, let's say, more classical brainwave lingo, you'd go from an alpha state mm -hmm. into a theta state. Um, and this is, it's quite, you know, your brain has become more orderly and they kind of slow down. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in some senses, that continues all the way down into deep sleep, you know, where in deep sleep, you have a predominant, this delta activity where you have very, very slow vibrations in the brain. Um, so would so, there be different options that you can choose to get you further into a meditative state based on, on where you are? 
Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and to be honest, we really haven't decided the right way to bring it out yet. Yeah. I mean, one possibility is having a more advanced mode. So, yeah. you know, once you sort of like get in through the gate and you have a solid practice and you're starting to, to notice the limitations in the experience, now there's somewhere for you to go, right? Because now, you know, perhaps you can in some way, you know, choose your own adventure and to say, hey, I want to have feedback on this particular thing or I want to pay particular attention to this kind of metric um, because I see that it's relating back to my practice in a useful way. And useful is actually, you know, a combination of both what, what you yourself find to be interesting and, um, uh, and correlated with where you're trying to go, go to, but also in relation to other people who might be at a similar stage of practice and being able to learn from them and what they're doing. Um, and so I, I imagine that has something to do with the calibration at where, where you're starting at. You would pick, pick a option and then you have to calibrate and then it would lead you down a certain path. Is that? Yeah. So that's, that's one possibility. And the other yeah. one is, you know, over the course of your use, you, you build up basically a landscape of, of yeah. neural activity and you have an opportunity to choose what territory you want to inhabit and where you're trying to go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll have the interview video with Chris Simone, the co-founder of Muse, coming out next week. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. I'll also be putting out a lot of content where I compare the Muse S to other devices like the Dream when it comes to sleep enhancement. So stick around. This is Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. See you again next week.